Good evening everyone and welcome back to the Okainan Research Channel for a new video tonight called The Eight Hidden Maps. Oh gosh, another journey. I hope you're gonna enjoy it. It might be a long video, so don't hesitate to uh, go grab a drink before I start and uh, found something very interesting. You'll tell me in the comments what you think about it. And let's have a look at those hidden maps. How did all that started? It started from my last video and I noticed a lot of viewers, a lot of new people joining. Welcome on board. I hope you like the channel. Uh, people who come and watch the videos, please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, the reason is, is to make the channel stronger, to be able to communicate to people that we want to communicate to and show them we're serious. And the material is followed by a lot of people, you know who I'm talking about. So don't hesitate to subscribe, it'd be good for the health of the channel. And the more views, the more subscriber, the more powerful knocking on the door of a certain item might be, so I'll let you judge if it's worth it. So this video started from a comment from last video. The last video was the apparatus, uh, the auto-regulating uh, valve that would keep the tank, the vault, always with high tide level water. Uh, I, I never, I think it's the second video with the most comments, lots of comments, a lot of things to answer to. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll provide the answers to all the questions I'm asked, but it takes a bit of time, I'm sorry. And this one's from Gasbo, who's been commenting many times in the past. Hello, Gasbo. Uh, my greetings to Michael and Ed, by the way, since I'm on the air. And Gasbo was asking this question, have you found anything in the Rochefoucauld Grail miniatures that looks or symbolically represents the mechanism little device that allows the opening or the closing of the uh, pipe from the ocean? And of course I did, uh, definitely. Um, right after I, I finished the last video, I deep dive back into the miniatures trying to find somebody looking like this or at least a description. and. I, I haven't found anything yet, but I found something else. And I would like you to come with me to this journey. So I, I'm working a lot with this edition. Remember the Rochefoucauld Grail is made of four volumes. And of those four volumes, they found about 160 copies or 160, 200 lookalike uh, manuscripts or four volume. And this is one of them. Um, this is referenced as the Royal MS-14E3. The date, 1315, 1325, so it's pretty old. It's got three of those four known volumes, known as the Histoire de Saint Graal, the Quest of the Saint Graal, and then the bridge version of the, the Death of Arthur, the Mort Arthur. And what's interesting at the bottom is the manuscript is connected in style to other manuscripts and to the... Uh, Amsterdam Bibliotheca Philosophica, which is the Rochefoucauld Grail, the one that was sold at Sotheby in December 2010, uh, both containing the Lancelot Grail cycle. So this book is not part of the original Rochefoucauld Grail, it's part of the same series made by the same people. And uh, I'm using it because uh, we're going to have a look at it now. Yeah, we're going to deep dive into, into some of the folios. And I want to have a uh, I want to show you this um, BL.UK. This is the British Library, United Kingdom. They made super high definition picture. I want to, this is, this is the website and I put the URL in the comments. And you navigate with those arrows here, right and left. Uh, you can also directly go to the right page. And this manuscript is, there's a lot of pages. Huh? There's about a miniature every three pages. There's 102 miniatures, I think, something like that. And there's 300 pages, basically. And when you navigate left and right, so we're on the cover pages, we get the notes from the former owners. Very interesting to read, but at the same time, doesn't bring much information. And we will soon land at the first page. And the beauty of, of this website is you can, I'm using the mouse scroller, and you can scroll to they made high res picture there. You can go to very, very much detail. And I was browsing those pictures. Here is one, for instance, looking for some shape or some description of that apparatus. And I was interested in the miniatures, of course. 
and I'm gonna do and propose you to browse the pages as I was browsing them looking for hints and clues in the miniature until something struck me very very hard <laughs> you're gonna see that so that's that's the first page that they call them folios that's the first folio that's the second folio which doesn't have any miniature and until then I, I wasn't seeing anything I was just looking for those bloody miniatures there's no miniatures here so I didn't care much but if your brain is sharp you should already see something that's wrong and I'm looking at this one again no miniature so I'm I'm passing and I'm passing again and still no miniature so I'm just browsing because that's what I was looking for and I'm on this folio I look at the picture but it doesn't help me on what I'm trying to achieve and the page okay three columns and I carry on and I reach this page and I'm like okay the miniature here doesn't correspond to anything and it's on this page uh, I think no it's the next one sorry uh, another page have you seen anything there's something that should if you're attentive if, if your brain works good and if your eyes get good sight you might you might have spotted something and I was just concentrating on those miniatures looking for them and no nothing about the shape I'm looking for and at this one uh, where am I now 11 yeah so it's this one I was looking at this one and all of a sudden I had a flash. Something was so wrong after all I've seen. So I'm going to give you the, the secret of what I found and uh, you'll let me know what you think about it. This is folio 11V for later. I'm going to go back to the first folios. Going back to the first folios and explain you what you, maybe you have seen it. Look at the text. We've been paying attention to the miniatures, or I have. Look at the text here. There are some, not all of them, I think, capital letters or letters that are highlighted in red. Not all letters, not all capital letters, I think, but here they are. They are highlighted in red. And if you look at very, very deep, that was probably done in the process of writing the text. That didn't come after. It's not like a kid started to fill in the the blanks, you know, it's the same color and they basically use vertical dashes uh, on some of them. Some of them are capital letters, but not here. Uh, th it's not the end of the sentence, even though they put a dot. Sometimes they put a dot for the end of the sentence. Sometimes they put a dot, but it's not the end of the sentence. Uh, I found it quite strange. Okay. But even more strange is the next page has got nothing in color. It's all black. They don't use the, the, those, those red dot system. So I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Did they start it something and they didn't finish it? So I, I paid more attention now and I'm looking for, oh, third page for your, dot, for your four right. No picture, no miniature, but yes, they used, again, this color coding on some of the capital letters. Here, no, but here, yes. Wow, that's... That was quite interesting uh, to discover this because s on purpose, some of the letters got color, some didn't, and some page didn't. The next page, no coloring. Everything is plain black. The next page, no coloring. Okay, so that's it. That's the end, finished. But then you will do so that three pages in a row, and now this one has got coloring, red again, red colors. Wow, that was something quite interesting because th there's something going on there, I think. This page is even more interesting because, uh, is it this one? No, it's the next one, sorry. Let me get to the next one. The one that I found something even more strange. Here, uh, on this page, the top part of the page has got the red marks, as you can see, if I zoom. But the bottom part of the page, go down after the picture no red color anymore only the top half okay ah oh, and that was kind of bothering and and that was strange that they did that and you browse to all the pages <coughs> and there's only eight pages eight folios out of the 300 something 
between folio 1 and 13, there's eight of them that have got the color code. All the others are pure blank. I can take any random, for instance, uh, 94 and 94. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> I hope it's not red, otherwise it would kill my video. But again, all black, you see. So only, only eight folios out of 300 something are in a red, um, red marked. Quite interesting. So let's go back to the presentation. Something was on purpose there. It's not by chance they did that. So I sensed, I, I, I resent, oh, that's English, I sensed, I, I, I collected uh, all the pages by folio. So it starts with the first page, which is folio 3R, then nothing, and all the ones I highlighted are the ones that got colored letters in. So that makes it eight folios. And I only had time to study seven because I found the eighth while I was doing the video. That's the reason. But you can see there's no regular pattern, no structure on some pages. They do and some pages don't. Interesting. I remember and you should remember <coughs> if you follow the channel and you follow Michael's. And if you're interested in Rennes Le Chateau and you read books about Rennes Le Chateau, uh, especially about Henry Lincoln, who provided all the ideas to that movie, uh, The Da Vinci Code. Everything is in his book. And he explained, I, I'm, I'm very connected with Henry because the way I discovered the first lines and the first way to operate the Rochefoucauld map, when you read his description, his biography about how he discovered this, a lot of similarities. And that's one of the parchment called the small parchment that play a great role in the, Roche, in the Rennes de Chateau mystery. And he's the one who came up with the design, noticing some letters were misplaced, I marks on it, etc. And it worked the same. And uh, you will notice, or you may notice, that they work with tangent. They don't hit usually the letters uh, uh, right in the center. Uh, Michael demonstrated that the Rochefoucauld map uses tangent system also. Uh, with tangent, you only have one point connecting to a circle. If you hit the circle, you get two points. So tangent could be more precise. And again, the same document using another approach of the coding. And at the bottom, you can see how, why, you, why you do those lines. What's the purpose? The purpose is that they overlay with the same proportion ratio uh, to real maps indicating real places. That's what works at Rennes Le Chateau. And those documents have been worked out by Lincoln in the 70s late 70s, early 80s, uh, there's like 40 years of experience on, on those coding techniques and how they work, uh, contrary to us, where we just discovered the Rochefoucauld Grail about six months ago or last year, and we're still working out the coding techniques. Um, another one in the same document is that, that alignment in uh, orange they detected, and themselves in blue is is the extract from the website I'm putting there, and I can't I had to translate it manually because it's a picture I couldn't have access to the text it's protected. I came up with that uh, translation which I'm going to read is septics will claim this is pure speculation uh, as Michael say careful you you're only drawing lines anybody can draw lines, but they say try for yourself because they got the same problem as we have with our Rochefoucauld and, and uh, documents, whether the grail or uh, the map, uh, is, is try for yourself. Uh, as Michael said to one of his uh, viewers the other day, uh, uh, the Rochefoucauld map uh, registers to 20 at least known uh, features and markers on the island. It, it can't be a coincidence, 20. And they say, yeah, if, if you try to do it yourself with a handwritten document, maybe you'll find two, two three, four coincidences, but not 12, as you can find here. And they comment, and I translated for Rennes Le Chateau analysis of those documents, they're pretty much the same problems we have with Michael. That is, we're looking for a guideline to follow, a construction method, uh, 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 an instruction set, how to use those documents. And they can't find any, and we don't have any. So we're reverse engineering, we are crossing references across several set of documents from the Bill Jackson source, from the Rochefoucauld Grail, from the Rochefoucauld map. And uh, we are demonstrating that everything's connected and they're talking about the same thing. But they have the same problem and, and I, it's, it's due to the fact all that is scripted and you're always missing one document, either the instruction or the... I was talking to Michael about the key and the lock. We've got the keys, but we don't know the lock uh, to operate the keys on. So we are deducing, but um, 
Very interesting, it's similar approach. So when I first, and I was looking for this folio, is the, is the folio at which, 311, my brain had a flash where I saying, hey, wait a second, you've, ju you've just been browsing through 13, 15 pages and, and yes, something's wrong with the coloring. Bing, that's, that's the first one that hit, my, that hit my brain. So it's the first one I analyzed and I'm gonna propose you the analyze I found, or I'm, I'm suggesting. So my assumption is that yes, those red marks are connected, connect the dots, dots to dots. It's, it's a tribute to Michael. Um, how I approached it, the first thing I saw were these ones. You can see C, 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 S, or sorry, C, C, E, S alignment. And yeah, they're aligned, no doubt. And that's on purpose. That's my hypothesis. It didn't come by chance. And it's very visible. So what I did is I connected this first line. And I realized it was crossing the page to, again, go tangent with this character here. Kind of a, your bearing is there after you connected those four. If you connect them going across, it doesn't work anymore. You don't reach the fifth one. That's why it's starting to put uh, in my mind the idea that you are working with tangent again. So that was one. And then... There's others. I can, I, can, I can see them now. Can you see between the C, the S, the E, the E, and going down somewhere? It looks like something's aligned there. So I drew it. And yes, and you can see, uh, sometimes you go, here you go to the right-hand side of the letters, uh, but here you're still on the right-hand side of the letter, but here it boxes it. And we've seen that technique in Rochefoucauld Grail, boxing the E in the riddle. You should go back and see... Uh, uh, Michael's video and mine about it. That we call them boxing the letters, showing that's exactly what you should do. So that's how you get your tangent. And I thought also, mm, I should have, yeah. Uh, another one right here, issued from the same point on top, which is interesting. And you can see the tangent here, the tangent there. You can't move that line around much left and right if you want to respect tangent and tangent on both sides. And here again, you've got one, two, three, a line, and the boxing. So that, that ties down and pins down your line. There's no other line you can draw there. One thing, uh, do I talk about it here? Yes. One thing also very uh, peculiar is I'm going to uh, get out of this picture, go back to the website on this folio, which is folio number 11V. Oh, I went far up. Bear with me. I want to show you. You know how they play trick on us, those guys who wrote those. Oh, come on. I hate this system. Uh, yeah, I've been struggling with this a lot. 11V. 11V. Yeah. Ah, th this zooming power is impressive. They did really high scan, high quality scan. Uh, I first look at the picture and I'm thinking, hmm, that may be the beginning of the construction of the island because the oak tree is very young and you got people in a hole doing something. I don't know. But what was interesting is the candle lights. Look at the color of the candle lights. And didn't they lighten up some later letters? That's what they did. They put light, they enlighten us about the letters. They, hi they highlight them. Light is everywhere. And um, what I thought is, these are just two more dots, two more points to connect. And if I connect them and go straight light, where do I go? And the answer is here. Uh, in this one, of course. So that was the first line I found, second, third, and that's the third one, going through the candles. And going through the candles, you tangent the E here and the R here. So very interesting. And when I did those, I really didn't know what I was going to look for. And at the same time, I knew what I was going to look for. I was going to look, f I was going to get patterns from the island. That's in, in my heart, it was for sure. But when I was drawing there, I couldn't know. So I finished the job with this one, with Folio 11. Oops, sorry, went too fast. And that's what I got finally. I am probably missing a couple. I'll let you see it, what it's drawing. Yeah, some of them I can't find the use, some of them... But this is exploration, it's all brand new. I found all this 72 hours ago. 
And that's pretty much the design you get. And, and you've got a remarkable point here uh, that's got four lines crossing it. Very interesting. You've got this one with a lot of connection. And this one here is like projecting four directions from here. But you know what I did then? You can imagine what I did is ask my good friend Michael, thank you Michael, to get me the most clean, <laughs> without lines everywhere, clean picture of the island with references to all the devices that come from the Rochefoucauld map. All those points um, have been uh, calculated uh, by Michael using the Rochefoucauld map and have been double, triple checked, double cross, triple crossed with the Roper's uh, survey, with the uh, Nolan survey, with everything you can dream of. And I, we, we strongly believe in this model, of course. And guess what I did? I let you look at it. Doesn't even bring any comment from me. Okay, so this pattern I found on the page does register the set points very intensively. Register La Hamp's position with a bit of offside, cone B and cone D and cone C by one, one, two, three, four lines crossing. So these are one, two, three, four, five register points. And I've got a line going through the valve, a line going through the hole under the, the, the trap door. And I've got a headstone line. I'm sure if I work the text more, because again, I did, I decoded seven text maps in 72 hours. There's more work, but I could find others, maybe. Uh, and that's where I am at the moment. So already on one, it's, I think, pretty impressive to find this. There's a lot of points. It still could be chance, you know, but what are the odds? So I put them side by side so you can see. Uh, one very interesting fact is everything's orientated north. I didn't have to change there. Maybe I moved it by three degrees because when they took the picture with the camera on the book, they were not exactly aligned 90 degrees. But it's presented on the text the same way you look at the picture from a north point of view, which is remarkable, I think. Uh, we left the uh, the red line. Um, the red line is the uh, the Ver line from the Rochefoucauld map. It's a pure east-west line going from Round Island all the way to uh, the other side on Frog Island, and it's it's the first line you need to register with the Rochefoucauld map. So it's our reference, if you wish, going through La Hampe. Okay, so that's the first folio. Now I'm gonna work on the second folio. And I've noticed they, they play tricks with the picture they insert. Uh, it was the candlelight on the one before. Here they want us to use the borders. So these are the lines I found. And you'll notice, I should zoom uh, which folio, 7R. Let's go back just one second to the 7R folio. So 7R is just from the corner, 7R. I've noticed this very interesting thing in the text. I'm gonna zoom, wow. They, they crossed a word. Uh, they don't even replace this one by that, that one. I don't, I can't read that one, but it's one of the rare times they cross like we made a mistake. And look at the color they used, not black color, red color, the same other red. So I took this as a information that you need to draw a horizontal line there somewhere. And using the, again, the uh, uh, tangent method, that's what you get. So that's the line that goes from the corner here and flirts with the E and flirts with the P, etc. And that's my horizontal line going through that crossed word. And if you followed my, our videos and you're acquainted with what we're working with, you recognize that angle. That's the signature angle. Yes, it is exactly the signature <laughs> angle. And they, may, they, 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 they bar that word for a reason in red. That's just so crazy. So overall, sorry, I went a bit fast. Overall, that's what you get. Yeah, that's yeah. It hits the the angle. It's not the first time it's going to do that. So that's that's the pattern you get, and when you apply this to the island, it reveals the west part, and of course. We know the signature by heart. You just need to align the horizontal one to uh, 
uh, the east-west line, and you get that angle that describes the whole Northern Cross there. And on the other side, it references the set point, it references the valve, even though it's not very precise. This is off, I'm not taking it as certain, but uh, you do find that line, that uh, <coughs> line set and triangle. Very nice, very interesting. Um, again, is it by chance? Uh, the more <laughs> the more we're gonna discover them, the less, I mean, it's already the second document on the page, which got errors in red, uh, characters marked and not the other pages and it gives that on the island. But let's carry on. The folio 9V is the one that you only have marks on the top part and the bottom part doesn't have marks anymore. So I highlighted the, the top part, that's the one. And even with naked eyes, you can start, I mean, you can guess that there's something going on here uh, and I can guess that it's even connecting here. Uh, you can guess that, oh yeah, I can see it now. Look at this. I mean, they're gonna be there for sure. You can you can see them with your bare eyes, and that's the model I've got. Okay. And that model transferred to the island. So this model concentrates on the headstone, which is not visible because it was buried. And again, you have the, uh, the, the Northern Cross here. They represent the full Northern Cross since you've got that line going from cone C to cone B. Yes, it's offset by a couple of degrees, probably five degrees should be more on the left here. And you've got A line that crosses La Hampe, but it doesn't mark it. And uh, you've got A line crossing, yeah, the night extension point is normal. Uh, North Anchor, you get the line, again, normal, nothing special. The, this, this one interesting is when you center on the headstone, uh, you get uh, Cone B revealed and La Hampe that is crossed, uh, and the Northern Cross, that's true. The next one, this folio. So we have some remarkable points that get constantly hit by all the lines, and if I again draw this one on the map. This is triangle two, which is concentrated on. And once you got triangle two here, uh, they reveal the cone B, cone D. Uh, there's the line that goes straight to the oak entrance. Usually we use the this line, huh, which goes to the triangle of Peter as the reference. But here, what's interesting and what Michael might be interested in in his research is they use other approaches to determine those points. They don't use our usual approach and I find it remarkable. Uh, I think, of course, this cross at the extension point. Um, what else do we have? Uh, mm, this is, I'm not sure if this goes through, so I won't adventure. But again, quite interesting setup. And comparison, this is the first time I had to change the rotation. I, I have to look at it from east-west instead of north-south to apply this model, and believe me, I did some trials. On folio 4R, that's the alignments you get, and I'm sure I'm missing some. And when applied to the island, this is what you get. Again, I had to rotate this one. It's the second or third time that the headstone is used as a remarkable point to position the rest. And it's the second or third time you have a location on the oak entrance. Uh, very often, the valve and the trapdoor are also identified. And that's, I've, I love it because, you know, the valve and the hole under the trapdoor are only showing on the Rochefoucauld map document. No, uh, in, uh, no other legend or report anybody's talking about a valve and a hole under a trapdoor. It's only those documents combined with the scrolls of Antero schematic. And, uh, even more brilliant, triangle two, which is highlighted, and set point, which is highlighted in other of those uh, layouts, are even more remarkable because they are concepts, those points. And I, again, salute Michael for understanding what, how they were used, how they were determined, and what concept they carried with them. And what's remarkable is that on this document, they highlight them. On the Rochefoucauld grade in 12, 1230, 35, those points are worked out and are determined and nobody ever seen them, right? So that, that's, that corroborates the Rochefoucauld um, map. 
Um, this one is the front page, remember? It was the first page, Folio 1 or Folio 3R because the first one are blank. And on the very first page, you got those red characters, red marks. Uh, this one was easy actually because it was really easy alignments to find. And you got again, you can see some points here are remarkable points, right? And let's see what it gives on the island. So again, you get your Nolan Cross alignment. You got the Nolan Cross alignment here that is being determined with a 90 degree angle. But more than that, you cross where the hump is, you determine the oak entrance, uh, you get cone C identified here. Uh, that starts to be a lot, I think. That's very interesting. Huh? I love it. Um, okay, the next one. And of course, I guess I tried to, but there's like eight of them. To overlay each of them, if you overlay all of them onto the island in a single picture, the, the eight of them, you probably got a full solution on the island, but that's not the way they meant us to use. And we're lacking, we're missing the instruction booklet. So we can just work it out here, because to me, it's pretty obvious those alignments. Here's another set. And, and just realize that they just match. <laughs> Look at that. Here we go. So on this one, you got triangle two identified, um, which doesn't exist. It's a virtual point. It's the, as Michael said, the gateway to the east part of the island, the extension point. And usually when we work out those, we work it by the Northern Cross. But here they propose another way. They propose to work, as Michael demonstrated, those lines are parallel. They're horizontal, parallel with the east-west line. And they propose another way to work it out uh, through this um, South Anchor, La Hompe. I think La Hompe is a little bit to the right. It's not, a, it's not supposed to be a line. We got Condi that could come into play. I, 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 I like it a lot by its simplicity. What they meant, what, what they wanted to transmit as a message, I'm not sure. But it's there. Um, that was the last one. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. It's only the beginning. I only discovered this, so there'll be more work. Uh, please feel free to comment and uh, share your ideas on this. And uh, subscribe again for the benefit of the channel. And uh, when I'll be working the eighth one, because you only saw seven here, uh, I'll let you know if I find anything. I was looking to be true. I was looking for... Uh, very often I was looking for, uh, we suppose according to our works, have a tunnel from here to there and a tunnel going down to the vault entrance. And I was hoping to find lines uh, of those tunnels or to find lines showing the underwater journey uh, from the oak entrance, maybe, I'm not even sure, but definitely from the vault uh, to the uh, valve, to the uh, hole under the trap door. So I'm still looking. Everybody take care. Thank you for following the channel and uh, talk to you soon. And I have a more new video later. Thank you very much. Bye bye.